Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and thanks for watching. And hey, thanks to our viewers all over the state, and especially to our viewers in the Harrisburg Lancaster market on WGAL TV, where we're the number one show in our time spot. T today we have a special program, a new arrangement between Penn State and Highmark uh, to create a new program that will help reduce disease in the state. We're going to talk with some principals from Highmark and Penn State about that. And then Pete DeCourcy from Capital Wire. What's going on up on the Hill? The Hill, in this case, is the Pennsylvania legislature. We'll find out about the reform activities of the past week when we return. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, we're going to uh, chat with some guests right now uh, about an interesting and I think very, very important new program that will lead to some very exciting research and hopefully to some cures. Uh, this program deals with uh, uh, Highmark Penn State University and Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. That's a mouthful, but I got it out. Joining me, as sometimes is the case, is uh, Mike Fiaschetti. He's the Senior Vice President at Highmark and Alan Breckbill. The executive director of Penn State Hershey Medical Center. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. All right, let's talk about this program. You all are pretty excited about this, and boy, it sounds like it's something that in the end could lead to some very, very important health care improvements for the citizens of the state. Uh, let's just go through the elements of it. Uh, uh, let, let, me, uh, let me start with you, uh, Alan. Go through the elements of this so that our viewers get a sense about what it is that you're trying to do. Sure. There's three basic elements. The first element is we received a grant from Highmark of $25 million. $20 million is going to our children's hospital. This brings us one step closer to building a freestanding children's hospital. We work at, uh, you know, we're very, very busy, and building a children's hospital will be a huge help to us. Now, tell me right now, so to, right at the moment, you don't have a separate freestanding we do facility. Not. We, so, go ahead. We have about 500 beds in the hospital. 123 of them are children's beds pediatric beds and this would enable us mm -hmm. when we build it to have a separate facility and that would be great for children great for central Pennsylvania okay uh, go ahead there's a second part of it which is a five million dollar grant and that's for research clinical research especially cancer research we are right now building a cancer institute on our campus a five-story building with research and mm -hmm. outpatient care mm -hmm. so that grant helps us a great deal in terms of doing clinical research not only at our hospital, but also members of the institute across Pennsylvania. Michael, let's let's turn to you. I mean, what, what is it that? I mean, obviously, I mean, you hope this bears fruit. I mean, right. what specifically are the reasons that Highmark did this? Well, I think Highmark shares a vision with Penn State and with the Hershey Medical Center in several ways. And Alan started to talk about some of the components of the deal. I think there are even more components than what Alan mentioned. But first of all. In terms of cancer care and care for children, uh, you know, critical illnesses don't travel well. And we have enough population in the central part of the state, enough population between the big population right. centers, Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, that we need improved cancer care here. We need, need improved care for children. So we shared that vision. And that's we sort of, let me just, I mean, that's sort of something you don't, we don't think about. I mean, yeah. if you're here and you're in this region and you need medical attention, Going to Philly and Pittsburgh, I mean, for the families, we tend not to think about that. But go yeah. ahead, add to that very, point. Very that's, difficult a great, that's a great point. For people to travel a long way to get yeah. that care. So it's nice to keep that care here, and we need improved capacity and improved capabilities. The other significant component to this deal is we're, we're going to be doing pr uh, projects each year. It's the long-term component. It's a 10-year deal, and we're going to be doing projects to look at health and wellness initiatives initiatives that reach out to individuals, to employees, to get them engaged in their own health. Yep. And we're going to test those. We're going to test to see what works and what doesn't work. And using Penn State's research arm right. and using their 60,000 employees and dependents, we have a great incubator to see how can we engage people to improve their health and wellness, yeah. to engage in healthier lifestyles. Uh, Alan, let's pick up on this point because I noticed that when Governor Rendell, and we, we're not going to get into we had a lot of programs of Governor Rendell's health care proposals, but one of the things the governor said, and I think we would all agree, you know, this makes sense, is that we've got to begin to take a, take a look at people, how, the, how they're dealing with their health care in general before they get to some problem. In other words, what are we eating? What is our lifestyle? I mean, I think 
that's what Mike's talking about here, is getting involved and finding out what works and doesn't work to prevent these long-term you know, and debilitating illnesses from coming along. Am I right about that? A absolutely. I think we all know we spend way too much money in health care the, the, toward the end of yeah. people's lives. And so to spend money up front to try to help people not get in the hospital, to do things yep. that are healthy for them, and to measure the effects of those, to make sure that we're doing things that make sense, we're really excited about that. And, yeah, we're going to do that over 10 years, yeah. and we've made a commitment to do that together. Well, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced after we do a lot of health care on this program, we have a lot of health care experts in, and, and, you know, that's part of the problem. Again, not we're going to get into it. We have, you know, let's say we have this 900,000 people without any coverage. I mean, by the time they get to see somebody in an emergency room or get to see a physician or get to your facility, you know, it may be that we're now dealing with far more serious right. problems, far more costly than if we kind of worked out a better... Is that a wrong concept? No, no it's not. The, the statistics bear it out. When you look at all of the studies, and there have been so many studies done on this, a full 60% yeah. of the health care costs could be avoided by changes in lifestyle or caused by lifestyle yeah. uh, issues, yeah. whether that's smoking, whether that's diet, whether that's lack of exercise, whether it's not taking care of chronic illnesses like diabetes or asthma and 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 so these things can be improved yep. and costs can be avoided yeah I mean I don't, go ahead did you want to add yeah, something? just go ahead just give me an example I think there's 21 million Americans that have diabetes six million of those are undiagnosed so for those patients to not even know they have diabetes or not even being seeking yeah. treatment and we all know that the effects diabetes has on people's yep. lives so yep. all right we're gonna take a break you guys we ought to have you back and we ought to do something about this in general because this I think is the is the wave of the future I mean getting a handle on these serious you know what isn't serious or potentially could be serious earlier on in the developmental particularly for young kids uh, you know could be just in terms of the health care of these kids which I think we all want to make sure get good health care but as they become adults alright we're uh, chatting about this new program that uh, uh, Highmark and Penn State uh, both its uh, university and medical center have going on or about to go on. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Pennsylvania Medical Society, doctors and patients preserve the relationship and by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to the program. Mike, you wanted to, I mean, I was on my kick here before mm -hmm. we went on the break about how important I think it is, you know, for physicals and what we eat. Go ahead, you wanted to make a point about well, that. Well, I, I think the point I want to make is this. I don't know that there's another arrangement like this in the country between a very large health insurer yeah. with a lot of information and a lot of data and a large research university an academic health right. center where we can prove out the long-term impacts of health and wellness initiatives on yep. people's health and on costs. So this is a really yep. rare partnership and a rare opportunity yep. to add some value for, for our members and for the population at large. And we're glad to report on it, by the way. Go ahead. I, I wanted to make another comment, too. I think when we were talking about the Children's Hospital and our need to expand our services, we're the only academic medical center within 100 miles. There's mm -hmm. not another one other right. in Philadelphia. And Baltimore. And so for us, we have tremendous demand for our services. We, we're at a high 90% occupancy rate all the time. And so to be able to add capacity is a tremendous mm -hmm. need for us. Mm -hmm. Let's talk, I mean, uh, you know, you had an option here, you know, Mr. Fiaschetti. You could have just said, well, we're just going to, you know, use this money to reduce premiums. I mean, what, 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 what? what what was your thinking behind that? I mean, it's a pretty important decision that you made. It's a lot of money. Very important. First of all, you need to know that this money comes out of our surplus. Yeah. It's not being paid for uh, by direct charges to our customers. If we were to take the money that we are granting uh, to Penn State and Hershey mm -hmm. and spread that over our customer base, it would be pennies, and it would be yeah. a one-time reduction, right. or maybe one month in one month's premium. But the return on these dollars to the community and to people uh, in getting health care is huge. In fact, when you look at investing in children's health, I mean, when you can cure or heal a 7 or 8 or 10-year-old, yep. think yep. about the 70-year return to oh, society sure. oh, as yeah. opposed to all the money oh, we yeah. spend at end, on end-of-life care. Yeah. So we see a huge return 
to our customers and to all the constituents we serve for this investment. Well, that's so, good. So that's that's where the decision came from. Well, well, that's a good point. Let me let me ask you this question. I mean, who, what specifically? I mean, what programs within uh, the medical center are going to be mostly affected by this? Children go through some of the where you think you're going to use this money. Sure, we've raised so far this 20 million. We've raised is part of 45 million that we've raised for the children's hospital. So once we can build our children's hospital, obviously that has a focus on all all kids, any okay. kind of illness possible. We are building a cancer institute, and the cancer institute is research and outpatient clinical care. The $5 million grant gives us the ability to put more patients on trial, so it helps us in research, clinical research, cancer research. We, have, we need to expand beds, and by creating a freestanding children's hospital, we're then able to expand adult services, too. I got it, but... The primary focus at first will be on, on in, in the cancer area and on children. Is that right? It will be on children. Will be on clinical research in cancer, and it will be health and wellness. Health and wellness. Go, go yes. ahead. Did you want to add to that? No, I was just going to add the health and wellness piece because that's all also a right. very important component of this. All right. The, the uh, final question: How are you going to uh, evaluate the progress of this? I know that, Mike, you pointed out that that. You know, there need to be benchmarks along the way to make sure that we're learning something, particularly in this area of what we can do about preventative medicine, which is, I, I think, the, the, the key area here. Yeah, that's correct, Terry. We're going to set up a structure uh, with constant information feeds to monitor the progress that we're making. And if things aren't working, we're going to make changes. Mm -hmm. So we will have a regular uh, process to monitor the information and look at what's working and what's not working, whether it's on the health and wellness piece and, and Hershey's, uh, uh, you know, uh, trials and so forth mm -hmm. relative to cancer research. So, so I was just going to add that we are obviously using the research expertise within Penn State Hershey mm -hmm. Medical Center in Penn State, and we've made a commitment to measure the effects of these programs over right. time. Yeah. Now, the university, up, the Penn State up at uh, University Park, are they involved in this because they are the parent university? I noticed that the arrangement that you have consists of three entities. Is that their... Yes, this partnership is with Penn State Hershey Medical Center, Penn State University that owns us, and State College and their campuses, yes. All right, great update. All right, when we return, uh, Pete DeCorsi from Capital Wire is going to tell us what our friends up on the legislature have been doing about legislative reform. They've had a flurry of it. Was it real reform? Was it meaningful? Uh, Peter will help us out uh, when uh, we return. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Credit Union Association, Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money, and by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education, 14 state-owned universities. The state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. Now, joining me as often is the case is Pete DeCourcy from CapitalWire.com. He's the Bureau Director of Capital Wire. Peter, welcome. All right, Peter, as you know, there's been a ton of, I mean, it's, there's a dizzying array of uh, activities going on in the Pennsylvania legislature and the House side about these reforms. They've been widely reported, uh, stemming, I think, from, the, from uh, the pay hike and all the stories about culture and lifestyle, per diems, pensions, legislature internally trying to straighten out its operations on the House side. Let's talk about, the uh, and just recently, the House completed its activities dealing with internal reform. Do I got that right so yep, far? With their own internal operating rules. That's right. Internal reform. Internal operating rules. All right. Let's talk about what they did. What changes did they make that the average citizen out there should care about? Okay. The, bi the biggest change they made is that for years they've used something called the Rules Committee to rewrite legislation to bring tax bills suddenly onto the floor and other measures like that that are controversial before members have a chance to read them, think about them, hear from constituents about them. The um, Reform Commission recommended these rules, and now the Rules Committee can no longer do that. Of course, with, there's a flip side always with yeah. this legislature. They also wanted to take the other leadership committee, the Appropriations Basically. Committee, out of the business of, ult of ultimate rewrites. They didn't. 
uh, not only did the Reform Commission fail on that, they failed by a three-to-one vote. Mm -hmm. The House as a whole rejected their idea to let no one be th this sudden rewrite right. committee by three-to-one, including House Majority Leader Bill DeWeese, who promised two weeks ago to support all, all right. the reform commissions. So let's get this straight. So the Rules Committee that used to amend legislation and then bring it to the floor for a vote, uh, often in the... Completely rewriting completely it. Completely rewriting it. Now, they no longer can do that, but the Appropriations Committee, where money bills go, uh, could still do that. Right. If they send it to the Appropriations Committee for a re-referral, the Appropriations Committee could gut a bill, rewrite a bill, okay. change anything. So in other have. words, there's still a vehicle to do what some people think shouldn't be done. Right. Now, Chairman Evans of the Appropriations Committee, Dwight Evans of Philadelphia, has vowed that he will not do that. Okay. But keep in mind, lots of people, you know... I understand. Lots of people have good intentions. When, it, when the rubber hits the road, right. th this will be the first time the legislature will be, will be has committed itself to not passing a bill after 11 p.m. at night, right. to not starting before 8 a.m. in the morning. We don't care if they start that early. You do, because you'd have to be there and cover them, right? Well, but again, it, when I talk to voters, I initially thought that. But when I talk to voters after the pay raise and after other things that have upset voters, mm -hmm. they said, and they did it in the middle of the night! Right. So I don't know how important that is, but I do know that it touched a nerve. Right. The people oh, I think you're right. did not like it. I think you're right. And I think that that is a big change. Another change is they can't have privately leased cars anymore. Now okay. they can just get fleet leases from the state. Now personally there's an argument about whether those and the other measures aren't just as expensive, but that's for another day. They did get rid of, you know, you can't get a, you know, $600 Cadillac, Cadillac Escalade, $600 a month. Right. Um, so they get them from the pool of available of state cars, in other words. And I think right? you're going to see a lot more reform on that. I think there's mm -hmm. going to be a a real effort to try to see who in the state has cars. All right, and what, and what about posting their expenses on the internet? Yeah, this is a big deal. Um, for a long time, you could only go see different kinds of expenses if you went into the house clerk's office mm -hmm. and asked in advance, and then they gave the member a couple of days notice. Then you could come in and hand copy them yourself. It was like yeah. this 19th century Charles Dickens <laughs> experience. Now, because of what they've done, what you get is not going to Actually, how you, you still have to ask for what you want, but they'll email it to you. Ah. And not only will they email it to you, but they've considerably broadened the categories of what you can what get. What you can get. So that's a pre All right, let's go to another, one other controversial thing is that two, two legislators in particular have had these nonprofit corporations, which they essentially either headed or controlled, and there was, a, and with millions and millions of dollars in community and economic development money, Mike Vian former House member from Beaver County, State Senator Vince Fumo, still a state senator, but under indictment, and the indictment did involve the use of funds that were in that nonprofit corporation. What did they do with those cor nonprofit corps? Well, this was an interesting one because it looked like they were going to trim that back considerably yeah, because a whole lot so. of legislators sit on the Rules Committee, the most powerful committee, right. um, full chairman and leaders, and they were really mad about this because, A, this reform commission that came right. along and proposed all this stuff right. took their normal job. B, they planned to do another round, ah. further taking their normal job. C, they took away from the reform commission the power to amend bills. Yeah. So the, reform, the rules committee, which had to pass this out to the House, was sitting there was the grumpiest b bunch of mostly white guys I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> they, they were just sitting there eating their spinach. They were miserable. And so what happened on this is they all said, well, I sit on a nonprofit and I don't do anything bad with it. Why should I do yeah, that? So they, okay. so they were going to gut it, but they didn't. Here's the thing. The Reform Commission won that battle. Yep. All they did is get the right for an individual member to say to the Ethics Commission, hey, if I'm on this board, am I okay? All right. We're going to find out. Win. This is what they did. When you come back, we're going to find out what the State House did not do in these internal reforms after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Builders Association, building today for a better tomorrow. And by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, 
bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. I am chatting with one of our contributor, regular contributors, Pete DeCourcy from Capital Wire, who's talking about the reforms in the State House, what they did or didn't do. We talked about what they did do. All right, Peter, what didn't they do uh, that, that the reformers, people who wanted these changes, thought they should do? Well, I mean, they didn't do most of the big ticket things. Yeah. They did not do anything about um, scaling back per diems. They did not do anything about the pensions. They didn't do anything about the staff bonuses. I mean, the fact is, they deferred all that stuff. Some of that stuff will require statutory yeah, um, that's right. legislation. And, but I mean, if you look at the things they didn't do, it's a bigger list than what they did mm -hmm. do. There was one significant thing that we did forget, which is that, um, well, I forgot it. That's right. Well, let's talk about, I want to talk about my favorite, my hobby. Everybody has a hobby horse. Here's mine. PSAs, public service announcements. I view them as just little more than incumbent protection practices. They left them alone, right? They did. Well, go they ahead. did. They did. But see, here's one case where I think the reformers made a big mistake: is that there were two proposals out there that they could have passed, but that Greg Vitale, the anti-PSA, Delaware County, right, Democrat from Delaware yep, County, Mr. Reform, turned up his nose at. The first would have. Um, said you can't do them 90 days before an election, which would have actually moved, taken two months a year out of them, which was an improvement as right. far as I'm concerned. The second is um, Reform Commission uh, Chairman Josh Shapiro from Montgomery County, also a Democrat, proposed why not do them um, so that you limit the member's face and name on the screen to the last five seconds of the ad. So, you had to, so if you wanted to do 25 seconds of why sure. you should show, sign up with the PACE program, Right now what they do is they have the member come on and say, the PACE program is wonderful and I voted for it and now you yeah. can sign up at my office yeah. and it's 30 seconds of the member. Yeah. As you know and as people who do television ads for a living know, the five second tag at the end, nobody yeah. sees and understands. We have about 20 seconds. Are they going to revisit these reform measures at all or is this it? PSAs will be revisited. There will be, there will be a second phase of this. We'll find more out about this week. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Great update. Uh, we'll expect you to keep tabs on this. All right, we'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and stay well.